Okay, now uh, let's talk about the eukaryotic translational termination. We have been talking about the eukaryotic translation and mainly we are looking at the differences of eukaryotic translation from that of the prokaryotic translation. And we have seen the initiation phase which, is, uh, vary, which varies a lot from the pro prokaryotic translation and then the elongation stage which is not varied too much compared with the prokaryote but it is also having some changes like co-translational translocation of proteins and the post-translational modifications which are new which are the features of eukaryotes not in prokaryotes now let's look at the translational termination and the termination phase is also uh, very very similar uh, for the eukaryotes as well as for the prokaryotes they are very much uh, sharing a common features so how the termination takes place now usually the termination occurs in uh, two different stages first stage is uh, the the cleavage the cleavage of the growing chain growing chain actually you can also call it the hydrolysis of the growing polypeptide chain and the second thing is the release or recycling recycling factors and ribosomes okay so these are the two phases for termination in eukaryotic translation first it will, it will be the cleavage because remember after this all different after the all different stages we have the ribosome let's say this is the ribosome uh, three different sites let's say uh, e p and a and what we know here is that we have this uh, this rna that that's this trna present and it is attached with different amino acid sequences actually this is the polypeptide chain the growing chain so what we need to do when we reach the stop codon remember the idea here is to hydrolyze this amino acid chain hydrolyze this peptide bo bond from here and cleave this peptide bond from here so we get a protein sequence which will be folded properly after that and second stage is the recycling of all the factors because not only the 40s and 60s subunit are present but also uh, remember obviously there should be an RNA I haven't drawn that RNA there should be an RNA placed here so we need to remove that RNA we need to remove those subunits from each other and also remove all those termination all those factors elongation factors and so so if you look at here how the peptide bond is cleaved uh, you can see it here that this is the scenario then once it reaches the stop codon remember this is the stop codon which is UAG for example in this case this is the stop codon so once it reaches the stop codon what will happen uh, the factors called release factor which are required for the termination phase release factor 3 and release factor 1 those two release factor will bring and this release factor 1 is a GTPase remember so release factor 3 is just a carrier which will carry the release factor 1 which is a GTPS into the place instead of carrying any other tRNA they will just bring themselves so once they bring themselves in this release factor 1 and 3 they help this this release factor 1 will hydrolyze the GTP into GDP it provides the energy with the help of this energy it actually break down this polypeptide chain here as you can see it's scissor like structure is provided it's nothing but it will cleave this particular growing chain the more idea will be cleared by this image so as you can see here this is the growing chain once the chain is grown a lot then what will bring it will bring the, the factor e, uh, release factor 3 which is also called as HBS1 and also release factor 1 which is called as dome 34 whatever there are different names of proteins uh, but uh, simply remember them by the release factor names because it's kind of easier to rem remember so once it brings them then the GTP is hydrolyzed remember so for the bringing of release factor 1 we need this uh, this uh, release factor 3 we need need this GTP in the place so once they bring it uh, they require the energy GTP is hydrolyzed GTP is released so now they need further energy and also the presence of water molecule to hydrolyze the peptide bond right so for that reason those GTP factors dissociate but they have another factor here is the ATP with the RLI1 this is another factor 
this is very specific factors for for the examples because all these images are taken from different uh, research papers so new research is going on to find out how it actually ends but this is kind of a very sim simplistic drawing it also brings h2o h2 is present so with the help of this h2o and atp that is brought here in this place by rli1 protein with the help of this and also remember the elongation uh, the, the release factor 1 is definitely in the place so it will actually help in hydrolysis of this peptide bond from here and the protein subunit is just separated the polypeptide chain is just separated so once the polypeptide bond is separated the peptide release is done then what we need to do we need to recycle all these units all these factors and ribosomal subunits for that what we have we have to recycle and for that generally we have recycling factors which is not provided here so you need a recycling factor to be to be present here or sometimes what happens here this RLI1 this protein and remember the ATP is still in place so now ATP if I hydrolyze the ATP it will give us the energy and that is exactly what we need for dissociating all the factors and now this ATP is hydrolyzed into ADP plus PI right inorganic phosphate so once this ATP is hydrolyzed that energy will separate 60s unit from 40s unit and also mRNA and also other factors everything's are separated outside tRNAs are also separate these are the tRNAs and everything's are separated so that's how the process works so this is a projected model I'm not going to tell you that this is the exact process how it works because the eukaryotic translation uh, is uh, full of questions that uh, the answer of which we don't know yet so research is going on so you can find different research papers and how they are interpreting this ending but you can see more or less this process of ending is very much similar with that of the prokaryotic translation termination the only major difference between the translation of prokaryotes and eukaryotes are in the structure of mRNA and the initiation phase right so once they pass through the initiation phase the later stages are easier and of course another thing you may see that this eukaryotic translation they require more energy to finally process I mean to process this whole whole thing uh, they ne require more of a GTPs uh, protein they require more of a ATP uh, for this process to occur properly so by this saying we can end this discussion on eukaryotic protein translation and I hope that you understand this whole processes uh, you can look at the step-by-step -step videos on different topics of initiation elongation and termination or if you want to see this whole lecture at once there is also a link for that there is also a video for that uh, all this uh, from the beginning of initiation to the end of termination you can watch in one go so if you like this video definitely definitely share it uh, because uh, there are not many videos on detailed process of eukaryotic translation in YouTube so share it and please subscribe to my channel and also uh, share it in the social media hit the like button if you like it so that's it guys and I hope that's helpful thank you